Hey everybody, Brian Goulet here with a special guest, Kara Benz from Boho Berry. She is blowing up lately with the bullet journaling and she was nice enough to want to come on and be our guest here today. How are you doing, Kara? I am doing so great, Brian. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks. Absolutely. So for those of, I think we have some overlapping audience, um, especially with the giveaway you recently did. We've been collaborating a little bit, um, but I think we have very kind of distinct separate kind of audiences and people who are using the things separately. So for those of you who don't know from my world, who don't know you, who are you and what is Boho Berry all about? Well, um, I started Boho Berry early last year and I actually started out as a jewelry business on Etsy. And then I started writing a blog to go with it. And on my blog, I started writing about a lot of personal development and organizational type things. And then I discovered the bullet journal and I started writing about that. And it has just blown up into this huge thing since then. But my blog mainly focuses on organization, how to improve your life and different productivity tips and things along those lines. So very cool. <laughs> and you're pretty big on Instagram as well. Hit up bit, on, yeah. I would call you. I would say you're getting to like near guru status on some of the social media stuff. Ah, pish pash. <laughs> how long have you been doing? Like you haven't. It's not like you've been doing this for years. I mean, when did you start? Yeah, really not very long. Um, it all started when I started bullet journaling, and that was only back in August of 2015. So I started that. I basically just started sharing my work and everything that I did, I would put out there and say, Hey, look at what I'm doing. And it just kind of snowballed and exploded. <laughs> like, I don't know really how it happened, but it's been such a roller coaster and such an adventure. So I'm really excited. So I've been doing this thing for like six years now, really aggressively trying to grow our audience and do all this fun stuff. And, you know, it seems like you're just kind of hitting the right thing at the right time, especially bullet journaling seems like is really the new hot thing. So can you take a minute to just kind of explain really what is bullet journaling? Because I think it's something a lot of people are interested in. Yes. Uh, well, bullet journaling is basically an organization system, but it's it's pretty much a DIY organization system or a DIY planner. But it's a way to organize your life. It can be your to-do list. It can be your notebook. It can be your sketchbook. It can be your journal, like everything all in one. So if you imagine everywhere that you write down notes all over the place during the day, like post-it notes, little notes here and there, if you were to write all of that down into one bulleted list each day, that would be your bullet journal. So you have a daily task list every day, and then you have what are called collections, which are basically just random lists. So you can have a collection of your favorite recipes. You can have a collection of goals that you want to achieve this year, whatever you want it to be. And each of those collections you index in the front of your notebook or your bullet journal. And that's basically it. So it's a way to just organize your entire life into one notebook that you carry with you at all times. That's very cool. Yes. I mean, how, how do you justify to somebody that might say, why would you carry around a paper notebook when <laughs> you, you, there's a million apps out there to organize yourself? You know, yes. Siri, you can talk to Siri. She can tell you jokes. She can help you organize stuff. Why, why would you do this by hand? Yeah, You know, for me, there's just something about putting pen to paper. And every time I've had a, which I do, I have a few organizational apps. I just don't connect with it as much. I don't check it as often. Whereas it's my bullet journal is this notebook that I just, I live in it. I draw in it. I write in it. I journal in it. I organize myself in it. And it's just, I don't know, there's something about having that tangible, I mean, your community will understand they're fountain pen lovers, just like I am, you put that pen to a paper and you hear that scratchiness and it, it just encourages you to use it more, I think, which is why I love it so much. That's a really good point. This is a, a complete and total tangent. But in the <laughs> previous version of my life, I was a certified carpet cleaner. No and way. I, had, I had a power washing and carpet cleaning business with my father and nice. uh, it was the same kind of thing people would you know this is such a tangent I can't believe I'm saying this but you know um, for people who would ask like what's a good vacuum cleaner to use because they would ask like the guy current cleaning carpet what's the best vacuum to use and it would be whatever one you're actually going to use like it doesn't matter if you have the most powerful vacuum cleaner in the world if you never use it your carpets are going to be dirty so even if you have this tiny dinky little vacuum as long as you're actually using it every day or whatever 
that's going to be the best tool for you. I don't know that's, why that came to mind. That's like a super old thought. I haven't well, done this in like definitely years, along but. those same lines. It's whatever works for you. And that's what I love about the bullet journal is its flexibility. So there are really no rules to it. You make it your own and it's changeable all of the time because it's not like a pre-printed planner where you're stuck with a certain format or anything like that. You kind of mm. change it and make tweaks as you go to make it fit your own life better, if that makes sense. That does make that's a lot That's one of the things sense. I love about it. Yeah. And yes. the, 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 I'll call it like the paper community, like the, the mm -hmm. planning community. You know, we uh, one of the brands that we carry here is Lamy, and they're kind of affiliated with Filofax, which the Filofax has like their own whole other following. You know, there's a little bit of overlap there. There's a lot of good Filofaxy kind of crazy people. Yes. Not, cra sorry, not crazy <laughs> in a bad way, crazy in a good way. There's a lot of people bullet YouTube journaling in Filofaxes. Yeah, that's what I was wondering because yes. there's, I've seen some overlap between the file of facts and, you know, fountain pen world, you know, it's interesting to think of like a Venn diagram with all these like overlapping yes. circles of all these <laughs> communities of people. So do you, you find like, there's like, that. is there overlap between like the bullet journaling community? And then is that like its own community even? It, it really is, but it's also, there's a huge overlap between the bullet journal community and the planner community as a whole. Like a lot of um, the bigger planner companies out there, like you've got, Aaron Condren and the Happy Planner and Filofax and things like that, people are taking the bullet journal system and adapting it to fit in their current planners. Interesting. And so there's a lot of overlap there. There's a lot of people that bullet journal in Midori Traveler's notebooks as well. So mm -hmm. it's it's all about, that's what I, one of the things I love about the bullet journal is that you can do it with any notebook or any piece of paper that you have really it's just adapting that system to adapt into whatever you own already very cool yeah i like that so obviously one of the, th the reasons that you have gotten a following is because not only are you actually using it but you're putting it out there as to how you're using it you have this yes. fantastic website you do lots of great instagram social media stuff actually teaching people mm -hmm. how you're using it so can you give us kind of a rundown of like, what's your site like? And if somebody's kind of just interested, I imagine a lot of people watching this video will be interested. How do they kind of get started and what, what resources have you put together? Yes, um, as far as getting started, before anyone heads to my website, I think they should go to bulletjournal.com and watch the video there. Um, it was invented by Ryder Carroll. He's this um, designer from New York City. And he has the rundown of the basic, like bare, bare bones bullet journal system. So once you get the hang of that, that's when you can start expanding and uh, making it work for you. But on my website, I basically just show people the different ways that I use it. I have different blog posts about how to handle future planning, how to create a better to-do list, different productivity hacks, different ways to organize your thoughts and ideas within your bullet journal, uh, different indexing systems, anything you can think of to adapt your bullet journal. I've I've written a post on it. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, but I love teaching people and I love opening people's eyes to this system because it's totally changed the way that I organize and maintain my own life. So that's what I'm all about over there, all about improving your life. Absolutely. And you can yes. tell that. And I think one of the more interesting things that you do on your site is you're very transparent about your own kind of goals, your your analytics, even your revenue, as far as what you're generating from doing what you're doing. Uh, what made you decide to want to be that open? Um, to be honest, I've, I've always followed a lot of different blogs and there's a lot of bigger blogs out there that post these monthly income and traffic reports and things like that. And they're making, I mean, ridiculous amounts of money. And I always thought I was like, you know, <laughs> I love that they share it. It's really cool to read how they do it, but that's impossible for me. Like, how would I ever achieve that? So I, what I wanted to do, and I started this in June of last year, I wanted to start from absolutely nothing when I was actually spending more than I was making on my blog. And each month I post a report to show people my progress, exactly what I did on social media, with email marketing, et cetera, and just show people what's possible. I want to show people that you can follow your dreams, you can do what you want to do in life. And all it takes is a little effort. So I'm hoping that by me sharing, <laughs> that people will get a better idea of how to go about those sort of things instead of just wishing and dreaming all the time. That so. is very cool. Yeah. <laughs> Have you had anybody that's, you know, been able to do anything with that yet? Because um, you're, you're still relatively new. So like, yeah, and I've, 
I've gotten some good response along the way from it. I haven't had anyone that's emailed me and said, oh my God, this changed my life. But it's coming. Uh, it's coming. Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. so. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. I can say like <laughs> one of the advantages I have now for, for all of my six years of experience, um, <laughs> that's one of the cooler things is like as you do things for a while, I haven't been, I haven't gone kind of down that same route as you have, mm -hmm. but like even still just being kind of open and like for us being a supplier and having educating people as much. Yes. You know, people saying like, I've been using pens for 30 years and now it's a more enjoyable experience I've had in my entire life because of your videos and stuff like that is like one of the most rewarding aspects. Absolutely. Of this. And, and that's know, my main goal is education, education, education. Like I just want to provide value where, um, where I see it's needed in the community. So that's awesome. Yes. I'm personally a huge fan of that. So oh, you get a big stamp of approval from me. <laughs> And everybody else, I'm sure, is super appreciative as well. Yeah. So who who kind of is your, I guess, audience? You know, who are you? Who are you? Who's really resonating with the kind of stuff you're doing? Uh, for me, it's kind of funny because I thought that it would be all like people within my age range, like 25 to 35. You know, all the girls that are into decorating their planners and all that sort of stuff. But I've gotten emails from people in all walks of life. I've got. Um, people that are 60, 70 years old that are just now getting into bullet journaling that are That's sending awesome. me emails saying thank you. But it's basically people that want to follow their dreams, want to achieve better goals, become better at goal setting in general, and have a way to organize it all and plan it all. So it's just, it's been so overwhelming. I get emails every day from people thanking me all over the world, different age ranges, it's nuts. I guess it's nuts. Yeah, that's really cool. Yes. That's really cool. I don't know how you do it all either because you're, you're doing basically all of it yourself, right? Yes. Yeah. I, I don't have any help right now, which I'm hoping to change um, yeah. around the middle of this year, but it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Yeah. What's like I, your, I mean, what's your daily kind of schedule like? Um, My typical day, I wake up between 5 and 5.30 in the morning and Oof. I start, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be rough. It's not so rough anymore. Um, but I start my morning with a morning routine that's called the Miracle Morning. And it's basically a sequence of steps uh, that I do every morning. So I sit and I meditate. I say affirmations. Uh, I visualize like I have this vision board that I look at. I do a little exercise, some reading, and then some writing. And that normally takes me anywhere from one and a half to two hours each morning. Wow. And then after that, I just dive into my email and social media and just go for the day. Um, but a lot of my day is spent writing. A lot of my day is spent taking pictures, editing. And I mean, you're on YouTube too. You know the craziness of video editing and trying to get all that ready. It can take a little bit of time. A yeah. little bit of time. Yeah. So yeah, and then between that, you know, I've got so much other stuff going on, things I'm trying to create. So it's it's a lot of work. It is. And then being present when my husband gets home from work, you know, and not just zoning out in front of my laptop all night. So yeah, yeah, it's a lot. Is he? But it's so in, rewarding. Is he involved in anything that you're doing? <laughs> um, he hasn't really been. He's very very supportive. Um, but actually, two days ago, he sent me an email, and I was like, "What is? Why are you sending me an email?" And it turned out to be this 1,200-word uh, blog post that he had written for me oh boy. <laughs> for my blog, which I actually posted today. So by the time you're watching this, it'll be uh, posted up on the blog. But yeah, it's crazy. He's wanting to get involved. I think he's seeing the results and seeing the work. And yeah, it's pretty cool. That's very cool. Do you think yeah. he would be interested and ever, you know, say it becomes a really kind of a big deal, you know? You think he'd ever want to come on and work together? I would hope so. That would be fun. But I got him I got him his first look term notebook and uh Lamy All Star a couple of weeks ago. So oh, he's nice. he's catching the bug. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Very cool. That's <laughs> really interesting. Yes. I get you know, Rachel and I have done the, you know, spousal dynamic thing. Yeah. Uh and it you know, it's not for everybody, but mm -hmm. it's it's really a pretty cool thing for those who are able to make it work. Absolutely. So we'll see. I don't ever see him getting super, super involved. Um, but yeah, he's, he's on board. On cool. Board. Well, yeah. Good for him. Good for him. Really <laughs> cool. I mean, it's really neat to see your success so far. 
I see, I, you know, I personally like see so much potential with what you're doing. So that's Thanks. why we're, that's why we want to do this. And, um, you know, it's just, it's so cool. It's so cool. You're, you're tuned Thanks. in a lot of the right stuff. Um, so as far as getting into bullet journaling, you know, I'm a product guy. I've done a lot of product reviews, <laughs> so I would be remiss if I didn't ask about some of the specifics of like, you know, what products are best for bullet journaling? Uh, First thing I would say is you can bullet journal in any notebook with any pen whatsoever. That being said, there's such a joy in having a really nice notebook and a really nice pen. <laughs> <laughs> um, my personal favorites are the dot grid Leuchtturm notebooks. And then for pens, I use a couple of different felt tip pens. Um, one is a Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen. And then besides that, I use my fountain pens for all of my different headers and any journaling that I do. So, yeah, basically a notebook and a pen, but those are my favorites. Nice. Yeah, and I love, 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 um, I love my Twisby 580. It's extra fine. It's my favorite pen to write with in my bullet journal. I found that the uh, fine tip fountain pens work a lot better in bullet journals. Nice. Yes. Yeah, especially if you're using the dot grids, because those dots are pretty tight. Pretty tight. Oh, yeah. That, I mean, that's a five millimeter ruling, so you've mm -hmm. got to write pretty small or yeah. write really big and take up 10 millimeters. But <laughs> Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Either way. But you can yeah. do however you want. That's the whole point, right? Yeah, like, that's exactly. However you want to do it. It's that's really, really cool. That's really cool. Do you have any people that kind of you look up to or that kind of inspired you to get into Absolutely. this? Or any people that, you've now, that you now like affiliated with? other people in the community. Yes. Um, I mean, the bullet journal community as a whole is just so inspiring in of itself. But I work really closely with a couple of other bullet journal bloggers. One is Kim over at Tiny Ray of Sunshine. She is actually my, I call her my blogging bestie. <laughs> but nice. we work super close together. We, meet, we actually meet once a week and bounce ideas off of each other. Uh, but we inspire each other constantly. Um, and then Jessica over at Pretty Prints and Paper and D at Decade 30. Um, but those are my, have been my main inspirations. And it's kind of funny because when I, when I started out bullet journaling, those were the girls that I looked up to in the bullet journal community. And kind of as I started putting my work out there and we started chit chatting and I would like fangirl like, oh my God, Kim at Tiny Ray of Sunshine just commented on my post <laughs> and I would get so excited. And now she's like my best friend. So it's, it's just amazing. Like the connections that you make and I just, I can't wait to meet these girls in real life, hopefully one day soon. Um, That's cool. But the community as a whole is just so supportive and everyone encourages each other. And there's so much inspiration, especially if you search the bullet journal hashtag on Instagram. Oh, my goodness. It's like gorgeousness overload. It's yeah. everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, for real. Yes. So tons of inspiration out there. And then, of course, the inventor of the bullet journal system himself, writer Carol. He's, his is very simplistic, very minimalistic. I mean, it's all just black pen, his little all caps handwriting. There's no decoration to his bullet journal whatsoever. But the way that he organizes things is just mind blowing. Like it's awesome. Very cool. So, yeah. Is there like a specific organization method that works best for bullet journal? I mean, there's a lot of different ways you could do it. I've, I've studied a lot of the getting things done method uh, from mm -hmm. David Allen's book. I've been doing that for the last three years or so with a combination of like notebooks and software. Um, but I didn't know if there's like any specific method that is best to kind of get started off with. Yeah, you know, for the most part, uh, the bullet journal, if you're going to start off plain and simple, I would just do it as a rapid logging system. So anything you think of throughout the day, just jot that down with a little bullet point, and then you can mark things off as you go along. I've heard of a lot of people doing the getting things done method in mm -hmm. their bullet journal. I personally myself haven't tried it, but basically just see it as one giant to-do list or task list and just mark things off as you go along. That's probably the most simplistic form. But then there's, of course, all different collections and ways that you can organize things. If you want to get super, super creative, you can totally do that as well. Very cool. But, yeah. Yeah, interesting. See, I haven't gotten into bullet journaling a lot myself. 
Uh, it's a relatively newer thing. I know um, Madigan, you know, she really got into your stuff, and she's <laughs> a total fan girl, girl of yours. Um, she's one of our community coordinators, and she um, has gotten into the bullet journaling. Sarah, our photographer, has gotten into it. And oh, nice. Whit- Whitney, our other assistant photographer, has kind of started to get into it as well. But we had a company meeting yesterday, and we kind of asked, you know, we showed a little bit of, like, what is bullet journaling? We talked about you a little yeah. bit. And uh, we asked who even in our company has ever heard of it, and no one had. Yeah, so, well, and that's the funny thing, too, is, like, to me, like, I feel like I'm living inside the bottle, and all I see is bullet journal everywhere. Right. But then I talk to someone, like, out, like, at the grocery store. They're like, what is that notebook you're writing in? I'm like, oh, it's my bullet journal. Duh. And they're like, <laughs> what? what is that? I don't understand. Right. So, yeah, it's kind of funny that it it is this hot thing that's totally taking off, but we're still in the baby stages for sure. Very cool. Yeah. I, I can envision you being like five <laughs> years from now at the bullet journaling, bullet journaling like world expo, <laughs> yes. hosting sessions and giving keynote speeches and stuff, right? <laughs> that would rock. I would totally do that. I mean, yes. when, when I talked to Liz Steele, it was the same kind of thing, like urban sketching, like whoever thought that would be right. this huge thing, but it really is. You know, yeah. do you think well, bullet journaling it's something is gonna... that's it's changing people's lives mm. and it's it's just so amazing. Like I feel so much more connected to not necessarily connected, but I feel grounded since I started using my bullet journal. Mm. Like I was so scatterbrained before. I would have notes in all kinds of different places. I would have reminders on my phone. I would have um, you know, joint calendars on iCal or Google Cal. Which I still do a little bit for my husband's sake, but now, like, I wake up in the morning, I know exactly what is going on that day, like, almost down to the minute of each day. So it's just, I don't know, I just feel so much more in control of my life than I ever have before. And it's the first planner system I've, I've been able to stick with. Because hmm. I've, used, I've used all those other planner systems. I've used a Filofax, I used a Franklin Covey, I used an Erin Condren, and the problem with those pre-printed planners to me is that they're all laid out for you. You can't change anything. And, you know, I would go two, three weeks going really strong with my planner and then I would forget about it for a week and then come back and I'd feel so guilty about all those empty days <laughs> that I would just say, screw it and just not use it anymore. Yeah. So I actually have... Somewhere laying around here, I have like piles of half used planners that oh, I just wow. never picked back up and used. But with the bullet journal, I mean, I've taken a week off here and there and come back and just flip to the very next page and get going again. So it's kind of cool that way. Nice. Yeah. Not to mention, there's no like expiration date on it, right? Like, yeah, absolutely. You, it, yeah, like, you do it all as you go. So yeah. there's no, you don't plan out. Well, I mean, you could plan out the week ahead, but you don't write out like the whole month of dates. You just go day by day. So at night, what I do is I just sit down and I draw out my header for the next day and I list out my tasks and events. And then through the day, I work on that. I'll write in any notes as needed, Um, but I don't plan out any further in advance than that. So it's kind of cool. You just kind of take everything day by day, which I love. Interesting. Yes. Yeah, I've I've studied a little bit of productivity stuff, you know, as my life has gotten a little more insane, running a business <laughs> and two kids and all this kind of stuff. Um, my situation is a little more complicated personally, yeah. uh, just because I review a lot of like notebooks and things like that. So <laughs> I actually end up being kind of a mess in terms of my own personal organization, just because because I need to like get to know like a file effects notebook or a whatever, Leuchtturm or something like that. Yeah. And then I'll carry it around for a week or two and then I'll switch to something else because yeah. I want to get to know it. So all my notes end up being in different places. Mm-hmm. I'm a bit of a hot mess. You're <laughs> the one to look up to for the personal organization <laughs> aspects. I've, I've read some books and understand the principles, but I don't always practice what I preach in that respect. Yeah, that, that'd be kind of hard. Maybe yeah. you should have just one master notebook. Yeah. And then start different projects in each of those little notebooks like have project notebooks yeah see what i've been doing and i'm getting like free consultation right now um (laughs) i've been doing uh like some smaller notebooks and i'll use them for different purposes so i'll have Mm -hmm. like one that'll be when i like travel to do networking things with other business people it'll be kind of for that 
Other ones will be like specific, t you know, types of meetings that I'll have here. Other ones will be more for brainstorming and stuff, which clearly, obviously, all that stuff I could put into one notebook and it would probably yeah. make more sense. Yeah. But um, that's how I've been doing it. That reminds me, actually, I, I actually use four different notebooks right now. Really? Um, <laughs> okay. Yes, I, I, have, I have my main bullet journal and then I have a blog and business bullet journal where I keep all of my collections related to my blog and business, but that I have in a master Leuchtturm, um, so it's nice and big, I've got lots of room to write. And then I have a notebook, it's actually a Filofax notebook, and I oh. use that as a brain dump or like a master list. Okay. And then I have another notebook for um, journaling. So I do actually use four different notebooks. I don't keep it all in one. Okay. But my main bullet journal is my main planner, if okay. that makes sense. Yes, that does make sense. But that way I can kind of keep certain things categorized, mm -hmm. but I still have all of my main to-dos and things like that all in one place. Plus there's lots of cool different colors, so you get to oh, yeah. kind of have <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like color. I don't know if you can tell uh -huh. from all that's going on back here. but <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What, is, what is your favorite color? Uh, I guess <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously teal. Yeah, yeah. I, lo I love teal. So that's awesome. So yeah, the emerald Leuchtturm, totally my favorite. It's the first one I ever got, and nice. I'll probably get many of those in the future. I'm actually so. using a uh, similar colored Filofax notebook. Oh, right yep, now. I have that one. Let's see. Is that right? Same size? Oh, you got the smaller one. Nice. Yeah, I've got the A5. Nice, good stuff. Yeah, that's my brain dump notebook. Yes. So. I like that one because you can rearrange the pages. That's yes. why I like that. The yeah, most. that's what I like about it for sure. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm kind of kind of a notebook nerd. Yeah. Kind of a pen nerd. How many notebooks so. do you have right now? Um, you care to admit? <laughs> accessible, I probably only have about six or seven. Okay. But I, I have quite a collection of notebooks that I haven't even opened yet. Because uh, I see a pretty notebook and I buy it. Yes. <laughs> so yes. That's kind of a thing. So I'm just kind of curious, you know, be, talk about this as much as you care to, but like you're doing all this stuff, you're working like crazy, you're clearly seeing success, you're going to see more of it. I can just tell you that right now. So like what do you see yourself doing aside from just like doing more of what you're doing now? Do you want to get into like doing product reviews or do you want to get into writing a book or hosting workshops or there's lots um, of different like ways that you see bloggers kind of spring up and start to yes, do things. Um, you know, what, are, what are you interested I, in? I've kind of leaned towards all of those things at one time or another. Okay. <laughs> um, I definitely want to do some product reviews on my own YouTube channel. So that could be fun. I already did like a moleskin like germ comparison video that was received really well. Um, but mainly I want to do like workshops, um, personal development type coaching. I do have some plans for a personal development book later on this year that I've been kind of working on behind the scenes. Nice. So that should be hopefully out this fall. But yeah, I've got a lot of things, a lot of things planned and a lot to do. It's yeah. Crazy. It's because you do the bullet journaling thing. You're so organized, you can actually get stuff done. Yeah. Well, I have a lot <laughs> planned in there. Now I just need to get to doing it all and putting yes. it all into action. So. Well, they say, sure. you know, there's like studies and stuff that say, and I read a lot of like business leadership kind of books and all that kind of stuff. And it says, if you want to accomplish a goal, the best thing you can do is to actually I, write it down. Yes. Right? Yes. Write it down and then constant review. If you write it down and never look at it again, it's probably not going to happen. Yeah. However, it is more likely to happen than if you hadn't written it down at all. True. True. But if you want it to really happen, you've got to review it and break it down into actionable steps, which is something that my bullet journal helps me to do. So I think yes. I'm on the right track. I think you need to look into David Allen's method a little bit, the getting things done. Yeah, yeah. I, I hearing, keep hearing I'm about it, and I I'm really, hearing, need, yeah. I really need to look into it. Yeah, you really should. Just a quick rundown for anyone who's interested, because I'm, I'm a huge fan of it, huge, huge mm -hmm. fan. He's got a book, and his book is pretty dry, but it's a book about personal organization. So how exciting can it really be? And from a guy who's from like the corporate. Pretty exciting, honestly. Well, <laughs> he comes from like the, reader, you know? he comes I'm from probably like the, his the, target audience anyway. That's true. You would find it more interesting than like the average person, right? Yes, on, right. on the street. Uh, no, but he, uh, it's an, it's a, it's a really interesting book because he talks about a lot of the principles that you're talking about here of like 
the reason we're stressed and is because we have too much on our mind and our brain's actually pretty bad at yeah, remembering gotta, things gotta, at the right time. Yes. You know, and so if you write it down it, and you have it in a trusted system, whatever that is, whether it's a software or a bullet journal or any it's post-it notes, whatever it is, he talks a lot about kind of the approach as opposed to the system itself. Yes. Which is why I think it would adapt really nicely into your, your bullet journaling there. So Yeah, I think so too. And I'm, I'm definitely going to look into that because it sounds like what I preach on a daily basis. It, it really is. It would it really, really overlap does. nicely. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's been it's been out for like 13, 14 years or so. So there's a lot of good content out there about awesome. how to do getting things done. So anyway, I'll just do that little plug. I'm in no way affiliated <laughs> with David Allen or his company or whatever. But I've just I personally, I find that to be something that's helped me as my business has grown to just keep myself a little more organized. Now, I have about 1,300 different actions mm-hmm. that I currently have unactioned in my <laughs> in my uh, program that I use for that. But even still, that's 1,300 things that are not on my mind constantly, yes, exactly. which is a huge relief. Mm-hmm. I'm probably on the more extreme end of like <laughs> having things to Maybe do a little bit. than most people, but still, that's yeah. really cool. That's really cool. So I'm just kind of curious too. I notice you obviously have some nice like body art going on here. Yes. You know, what, <laughs> is there a story bit. behind that? Like, um, I I just really like it. <laughs> um, I've always been a huge fan of cherry blossoms, so that's why I went with that. And then, um, just in the last few years, I really got into drawing mandalas and things okay. along that nature. So that's why I got that here. And all this will get colored in, but I've just always been a few a huge fan of body art. Um, I wanted something feminine, not like skulls and crossbones. So that's what I went with, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I could picture you with that, like barbed wire, skulls and swords and stuff like that. Well, it's funny because my my dad's like this big burly biker dude. And uh, so (laughs) everybody that looks at me, they're like, yep, you're your dad's daughter. And I'm like, (laughs) no. And funny enough, my dad only has one tattoo, but he's got that aesthetic that everybody's like. Nice. <laughs> like, yeah. Nice. That's but, awesome. Yeah, I've just always loved it. Loved yeah. It. I'm I'm literally just realizing now at this point that I intended to introduce both of us to our two audiences, and mm-hmm. I totally didn't even talk about myself or who yes. I am. Tell me so, about you. Tell my yeah. people about you. Yeah, I'll give you my little elevator pitch here. <laughs> um, so for those of you who are from Kara's world, uh, I am Brian Goulet. My wife and I started the Goulet Pen Company, which originally we were making wooden pens. That's how we started out. But that didn't really take off so well. We got into fountain pens, ink and paper and the like, and got into doing blogging, video reviews, and so on. Um, and we did that about six years ago. Um, right as our son was born. So great timing, no better time to start a business. Uh, I was already doing the business full time for the pen making thing. Rachel had, she was pulling the wagon financially at the time, uh, decided that she couldn't go back after having our son. So we kind of went all in uh, at when we had nowhere near the following that you have, Kara. Uh, <laughs> we decided to go all in on the business and uh, ended up uh, making it work. So through nothing but sheer grit and hard work. So, um, you know, basically we've been growing ever since. Uh, We have now one of the larger uh, online fountain pen focused uh, retail stores. We ship all over the world and uh, do a lot of blogging and social media kind of stuff. Uh, Very heavily kind of service oriented, education oriented, uh, you know, store. So that's basically our story, and uh, I'm at the point now where I've done so many videos and reviews and stuff like that with just myself in a room, uh, you know, where uh, I've been kind of heads down focused on what I've been doing and very focused on like the fountain pen world specifically because there's a very strong fountain pen audience, uh, you know, that's a very f- strong fountain pen community, I guess you could call it. But what I've noticed recently is there are people that are using fountain pens as a part of a lot of other things they're doing. Um, There's people that do, you know, the urban sketching. There's like the Filofax, like planner crowd. There's now bullet journaling, which has kind of been more on my radar recently. Um, There's people that are doing other things like ink washing and kind of more artistic mixed media kind of stuff. There's like the calligraphers who are using them with dip pens and folded nibs and a lot of that's on Instagram now too. So it's just, it's really fascinating for me to see so much of that kind of creative um, stuff that's coming up 
through these social media channels and through bloggers and video video people like ourselves um, that I'm tr I'm finding tremendous value in linking up with people from kind of overlapping communities, not necessarily just fountain pen people. Yeah. That's what I'm finding so fascinating, and I, uh, I that's that's you know you I think have proved that for us because we just recently did this contest where you gave away <laughs> a Leuchtturm and a and a Metropolitan. It was huge. Yeah, it's huge. Twenty five thousand entries, Brian. It that's... was nuts. I couldn't believe it. No, that blows my mind. I mean, just unbelievable. Yeah, well, unbelievable. and it was crazy because, you know, I post a lot of pictures of my bullet journal, and as soon as I started kind of throwing tidbits about my fountain pens in there, people just started going nuts. And I was throwing your name out on Instagram, like, left and right. <laughs> so people were like, where do you get a fountain pen? How do you, how does it work? How do you? And I'm like, go watch Brian's videos. He's awesome. He'll tell you all about them. Um, but yeah, so when I did that giveaway, people were like, oh, the pens match the notebooks. Like it was just, oh, yeah. it was great. It was great. And oh, yeah. just seeing like that just cemented it for me that our communities are so intertwined, like you said. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's so great. It's so yeah. great to see them coming together. Well, yeah, absolutely. And what I love so much is that, you know, I've, I've got such a product focus, you know, I, I personally am just a very utilitarian kind of guy. Like, I was very, like, hands-on woodworking tools, that kind of stuff. Um, so when I, my approach to fountain pens was always like, let's take the pen apart, let's talk about all the different specs and details and all that kind of stuff. It wasn't so much as, like, what do you actually do with it? I mean, for me, people would ask, what do you do with it? I'm like, well, do whatever you want. You know, it's your <laughs> pen. You know, that was kind of, like, where, where I would stop. And now yeah. I'm finding, like, oh people actually like really need some help and knowing what yeah. to do with the pens <laughs> other than just collecting a ton of pens and you know you know yeah. and I do like writing and I kind of do my own thing but like uh, for me it's inspiring to see kind of what you're able to do and see a whole community of people that are really just taking these things as tools and doing amazing things that I never could have envisioned yeah. people would be doing with these pens and notebooks uh, it's just fascinating to me and so for, for, I'm just like trying to learn and trying to kind of connect with more people that are doing it because it you know you're what, the stuff you're doing with your bullet journals is stuff that I could you know okay maybe I could do it if I really put my mind to it but it's not right. like natural to me and it's it's uh you know with my time and everything I could never do what you're doing so I think it's just so cool that we can link up like that yeah absolutely and for me with fountain pens I mean and I'm sure it's been like this with a lot of people that started out because I didn't actually get into fountain pens until probably about uh, October, November of last year. Yeah, and man. I ordered my first pen and it was a Pilot Metropolitan. And I wrote with it and I was just hooked right away. Immediately I was like, okay, like now what do I do? Okay, I'm gonna write with it. Okay, now I, I gotta improve my cursive now because my cursive doesn't live up to this pen. And yeah. so I started just this daily handwriting practice that I've been doing every single day and then I started drawing with them. Then I ordered more pens. Then my husband got me that Van Gogh for my birthday and I freaked. <laughs> and it's just, I'm running out of room. Um, but ultimately, yeah, like that, what do you do with your pens now that you have them? Like for me, it's all about finding those different ways to use them. And practicing my handwriting is one of the big ones. That's one of the big awesome. ones for me. What are yeah. you, what have you been using a particular method? That's a question I get asked a lot is how do uh, I improve my handwriting? So what have you found success? Cause yeah, I, I actually, I got a, I got a letter from you cause you're doing Inco Rimo yes. right now. And I have it here somewhere. Here it is. <laughs> uh, yeah. You drew this cool little fountain pen. I don't know which camera I'm showing it to cause I'm recording hey. both, but this cool little fountain pen on it. And I'll try yeah, to that's show my pilot it. metropolitan, my retro pop. <laughs> awesome. In the teal, of course. Yes, it's a uh, diamine turquoise is what I drew that with. Yeah, and you just wrote this awesome letter with really, really just wonderful handwriting. Like, I just want to compliment your handwriting. Yeah, I've been practicing like a mad woman, and I actually I actually started practicing with these old um, Spencerian copy books that I found on Amazon, huh. um, which I've seen a few reviews on them, kind of in different places on YouTube, so I decided to try them. But they're these replicas of the old handbooks they used to hand out to students back in the 1800s to learn Spencerian script. So I started practicing with that and then just kind of branched off on my own 
after using those. But that's where I got the basic letter formations from. And then I just practice a little bit every day. Like I always try, I keep a Rhodia dot pad on my desk and I just try to fill one whole page every day, no matter what I'm doing. Wow, that's cool. But speaking of handwriting practice, um, we actually have a challenge going on on Instagram. It's called hashtag rock your handwriting. Mm -hmm. And if you search that hashtag on Instagram, you'll find the prompts. But we basically release um, a prompt per day for the month, and everybody kind of chimes in with their take on those particular prompts. So it's we'll have a drill one day. Like the other day, we had a drill for whatever your favorite word is, which mine was serendipity. So I wrote serendipity over and over and over again um, and posted that as my entry. But it's just a way for everybody to kind of participate and practice their handwriting together every day and share their progress throughout the month. So nice. that's a very cool thing we've been doing, which has gotten a lot, a lot of positive feedback uh, since we started it in February. So that's very cool. fun. So if you need something to do with your fountain pens. <laughs> that's awesome. Yes. Yeah, I think we're getting a lot of people that are following you so that they get inspired with how to actually use their stuff. Yes. That's awesome. Do you have a favorite uh, letter that you like to write in cursive? A favorite letter? I would say the letter J, the capital J. Capital, okay. It's just you so distinguish. big and swirly. Yeah. I love it. I yes. like D, capital D. Oh, I like see, I don't one. like capital Ds. They never look right to me. Really? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I love them. Long. I know, I need to work on those. And the L, too. Love capital Oh, L L's. is great. It's yeah. big and swirly. Yes, mm -hmm. I like big and swirly. Yeah. <laughs> I can't stand uppercase Qs, though. Yeah, I refuse I, to. I refuse to do like. The, I don't want it to look like a two. No, I just no. do a regular Q and then just go on. Yeah, yeah. So I, I I actually do an O and then I go. Oh, I need to put a tail on it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a, not a good one. I don't like the the two Qs. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. All, all I've been able to think about lately are those stealthy black goulet nibs. Like, I, I want them all in my life. Oh, yeah. You mean, yes. like, these ones right here? <laughs> yeah, I need got? to know when I can buy them. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're just so stealthy. They like, are really cool, got to say. Yeah. I, I'm really a fan of all those stealthed out, like, all black, like, that emotion. I've been thinking about that. And... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you seen yeah. Homo sapiens Dark Age? Oh, uh... yeah. <laughs> Roll. <laughs> that pen is pretty sweet, I'm not going to lie. Soon. Soon. Yes. Yes. You should write down a goal for like, if I right. have like 20 million Instagram followers, I'll get a dark age. <laughs> 20 <you> million. Know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That'll probably happen next year, you know. Right? Yeah. Maybe it's like an August goal, you know. <laughs> One year anniversary kind of thing, right? Right. Right. <laughs> If that happens, I'll just buy myself like three of them, you know? There you go. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and I had a suggestion from the first Goulet guest video that we did with Liz Steele. Um, somebody commented and said like, hey, you should ask like standardized questions for everybody about like their favorite products and stuff like that. So I try and kind of compiled it into one question. That's so, like if you were basically stranded on a desert island or in like some kind of zombie <laughs> apocalypse or something and you only could have one pen, oh. ink and paper what would you choose that's so hard I just know. one pen i know <gasps> people ask me that and i'm like you gotta be kidding oh. me. Like, i have like 400 pens at this point like, okay I can't i'm gonna start with the easier and go with paper and i would say that i would just want a leuchterm notebook mm -hmm. nice and simple what um, color color probably orange orange really yeah i don't know why i'm i'm digging the orange lately it's very bright and sunny okay, <laughs> okay. cool yeah um what what ruling dot dot grid for sure okay because that's the most flexible you can sketch you can draw you can write yeah need what that size flexibility. what size are you talking like a5, a5? okay cool. you can carry it around comfortably it's not mm. overwhelming but it's big enough to draw things in awesome ink I would have to go with a black ink. I think I would just go with plain old Noodler's black. Because black is so flexible, you yeah. know? What if I want to draw a, a sunshine and all I have is teal ink? Hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it would have to be Noodler's black. And what's ironic about that is it's referred to as Noodler's bulletproof black. Bulletproof. <gasps> it's perfect. It's For a magic. bullet journal. Perhaps. Oh, what a paradox. How do you yes. use bullet journaling with a bulletproof ink? 
Yes. <laughs> okay, it's magic. It's meant to be. <laughs> and then for a pen, I would have to take my Karis Customs Fountain K. Nice. Okay. Because it's indestructible. You nice. ran it over with your car and threw it across a parking lot. I literally you know? did. I actually threw it across a parking lot twice. Nice. <laughs> my arm was out of the frame the first time did I did it. Did you not get it in the first take? Yep. <laughs> so I, I picked it up and I was like, oh, it's not destroyed that bad. Let's do it again. Whew. Nice. Yep. But yeah, for its for its durability and how much I just love it right now, that would be my pen pick. Awesome. So. Well, thanks so much, Kara, for coming on. This was Absolutely. a blast. It's so much fun. Yeah, I have a feeling we'll probably be doing things together in the future. At least I'm hoping so. Yes, let's. Yeah, let's. very cool. So for anybody who's interested, where can they find out more about you and how do they follow you? And they yes. should follow you, so please tell them how. <laughs> yeah, you can find me at www.bohoberry.com, and that's B O H O B E R R Y dot com. And on Instagram, I'm boho dot berry. And if you follow me those two places, that's pretty much all you need. <laughs> there you go. You'll find yeah. anything else you're doing from there, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. What is boho berry anyway? Is that a thing? Is that like an actual berry? <laughs> well, what's funny is, like I said, I started out as a jewelry company. Um, started running a jewelry shop on Etsy and I just wanted something that was kind of a boho vibe and I liked the alliteration and that's just what I went with and then I started my blog and named it the same thing and it's just it's kind of stuck and it is what it is now and now boho berry is synonymous with bullet journaling I guess. Nice. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, there's it no works. going back now. It works. Yeah. <laughs> very cool. Yeah, and it kind of fits my vibe, my personality. I'm very laid back, so. Yeah. So, yeah. That's a cool, I just, thinking back to a minute ago about your pen choice, I just realized it's Karis Customs. Your name is Kara. Mm -hmm. It was which, a sign from the universe when, when you all launched those. I was absolutely. like, oh, take my money. Here you absolutely. go. Absolutely. <laughs> that's actually a question we get asked a lot is like, who's Kara? Like Karis yeah. Customs. Who's Kara? It's like, no, it's actually Bill yeah, Karras. It's not like the possessive the guy. Karras. Yeah. 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 It's a guy named Bill Karras. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. Thanks so much. This is great. Absolutely. We will catch you later. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. This was a blast. Kara's awesome. You should follow her and all of her stuff. And if you have any comments, we're going to have this on YouTube and on our blog. And we may talk about some way that you can help share it too because you got a very vibrant community. So we'll work some things out there. But please do that. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Goulet Pen Company. Be sure to check out goulepens.com and right on.